Hello friends, this video on mechanical properties of fluids part 33 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos from part 1 to part 32 before going ahead with part 33. Let us look at certain concepts which help in practical applications related to surface tension and surface energy. Now, whenever there is a molecule which is present inside the liquid, if it is strongly attracted by all its neighboring molecules, in that case, the surface aid energy would be lesser. As you can see in this figure, we see that this is the molecule, right? So it is attracted, most part of it is inside the liquid. So it is attracted by its neighbors. So it is strongly attracted by all its family members. As a result, the surface energy which it poses because of this surface area is lesser. If you consider another scenario where the molecule is partially inside water and partially exposed to the surface, in that case, the force which is exerted by the neighboring molecules is lesser because lesser part of it is inside. As a result, the surface energy that uh, this molecule has is more. Similarly, if you consider the third scenario, here if you see only a little part of it is inside water. So a very small part of it is basically attracted by its family members. So what do we conclude from this? We conclude that lesser the surface energy, greater is the attraction from the neighboring molecules. So we can say that a fluid will stick to a solid surface. So using the same concept, we can say that a fluid will stick to a solid surface if the surface energy between the fluid and solid is smaller than the sum of the surface energies between solid air and fluid air. Let us suppose this is some solid particle and this is a fluid. So this fluid will stick to the solid particle if the surface energy between the fluid and the solid is lesser. It should be lesser than the surface energy between the fluid and the air and the surface energy between the solid and the air. That means two substances as I told you before also in, the, in one of the previous slides that two molecules when they attract the surface energy, the surface area decreases or the surface energy decreases. So in order to be stable, the surface energy should be least. So when we say that two molecules will stick to each other, that means they will reach a stable state. They will be stable if they stick to each other. So they will stick to each other only when the energy is lesser. That is the surface energy between that particle and the fluid should be smaller than the sum of the surface energies between solid air and fluid air. So we can write it like this. The surface energy between the solid and the fluid should be less than the surface energy between fluid air plus the surface energy between solid air. So if this condition is fulfilled only then a fluid will stick to a surface. Now let us look at one of the questions which we thought about in the first slide when we started with surface energies. Why does water stick to glass but mercury does not? Just now in the previous slide we discussed what makes two substances stick to each other. So the same concept will apply here as well. Even in this case, what happens in case of water? In case of water, there are three things which we have here. One is water, glass and air. So this is the fluid, this is the solid and this is the gas. So we have three things, water, glass and air. So in case of water and glass, so water sticks to glass because the surface energy of water, glass is lesser than the sum of the surface energy between water, air and the surface energy between glass, air. So as a result, water sticks to glass. Whereas on the other hand, if you consider mercury, in case of mercury, we have three things again. 
mercury, glass and air. So in case of mercury, the surface energy of between mercury glass is not smaller than, rather it is greater than the surface energy between mercury air plus the surface energy between air glass. So because of this reason or because of this basic concept, it happens that water sticks to glass whereas mercury does not. Now we will look at the application of surface tension. The best example that we can take is the working of detergents. All of us are aware of detergents which we normally use for washing clothes. That is, which is used for the purpose of removing dirt from the clothes. Now, why do we use detergents and how do they actually work? That is what we will study here. Now, let us suppose if we do not use detergents and normally wash clothes with plain water. Do you think that the dirt will get removed? No. Many times it, it might happen that some of the dirt may flow with the flowing water but the dirt which is maybe oily or greasy in nature and which sticks to the clothes they will not get removed if we do not use any detergent. Now how does detergent help in that? Generally what happens is the dirt is generally greasy or oily in nature and we know that oil and water do not mix with each other. So we need an agent which can mix dirt with the water and thus remove them from the clothes. Detergent basically consists of molecules which are hairpin shaped. If you see it, you can see the shape as similar to that of a hairpin. On one end, it sticks to the water and on the other hand, it sticks to the grease. So what happens? As you see, you can see in the first diagram, the first step where we can see that detergent is added to water. So these hairpin shaped molecules starts roaming around everywhere in water. In the second step, you can see that these are, let us suppose this is the dirt or the grease which are there on the clothes. This, these are the, this is your cloth. So these are the dirt on the cloth. So they are sticking to the surface of the cloth. Now once the detergent molecules come into picture, they, they stick, they, they get stuck to the dirt on one end and to water at the other end. As a result, the dirt gets accumulated and it gets attracted by these hairpin shaped molecules as you can see here. So the dirts are getting detached from the cloth. As a result, you can see that these flower shaped objects are formed in the water and the dirt gets suspended. If you see, the dirt is trapped between all the detergent molecules and since the detergent molecules on the other end is attracted to water so all these dirt keeps floating in water and when the water is removed the dirt gets removed with the water and it is detached from the clothes and therefore the clothes get cleaned. So that is how detergents function. So here also you see that the surface tension played an important role. This is how it worked. So once again we will have a quick review how the dirt gets removed. When we add detergent molecules which are hairpin shaped, on one end they attract water and on the other end they attract the greasy or oily particles. As a result, the oily particles get attracted towards the detergent molecule and they, they are suspended in water. Therefore, they leave the clothes and the clothes become dirt free. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.